how is Junior <laughs> going and where will he play? Yeah, no, Junior's going to play a full game in the sample um, uh, tomorrow. So, no, he's going really well. Um, obviously, he missed a little bit with the COVID protocols, but body-wise, he's, he's really good. Um, and, the, yeah, it was decided the best thing for him was to have a full game in the sample. But uh, from what we've seen, and I've seen it training, um, yeah, everyone's really looking forward to him getting back in the, in the team, um, especially the forward with with his ball use and his composure with the with ball in hand. So does he need more than one game? Is one game enough for him to be ready for round one? I, th I think it depends on how uh, he recovers from the game. But uh, um, yeah, I think the best decision for round one would be for him to have a full game in the in the sample. So uh, he's nearly there, but just not quite. But hopefully, if he if everything goes well, uh, he'll definitely be uh, a um, chance. Also, uh, what have you sort of told your forwards in the absence of Taylor? How do you anticipate covering that hole that he leaves? Pretty big one. Yeah, pretty big one. And and last week uh, we probably co couldn't with the numbers out play out perfect structure ahead of the ball. Um, but this week we've got a few more tools. Uh, Elliot Himmelberg's coming back in. Um, Lockie Gallant's going to have an opportunity as well. Uh, as well as um, Riley Thilthorpe and Darcy Fogarty. So we'll be able to get to see the tools work without techs. And um, yeah, it's an opportunity for them that they're all different players. So we'll structure up and play to their strengths. What, um, what have you changed anything in terms of your coaching philosophy with the forwards after a year getting to know everybody and understanding how they work together? Are you you're probably a little bit better placed a year on? Is there a, a change in style or anything that you've taught them? Not so much style, but we're probably learning more about each other because we're still a, a very young group. We've learned, each, learned more about each other and how they play. So we've probably changed little things to, to suit the strengths. And now we've got a Josh Rochelle um, in our team as well. So we're, we're working around him and, and putting him in positions where we, want, where we think he can get the footy. Um, the same with with Darcy Fogarty and, and, and Riley and the like. So, yeah, I think not necessarily changing our philosophy on how we want to play, but obviously just little tweaks to our structure to bring them into the game um, more. How good's Rochelle in your uh, you know, brief time having worked with him? Is he as impressive as he looks on TV? Yeah, no, no, he is. And, he, and he, look, he's ready to go. So, um, yeah, he obviously is a big chance for round one. I love um, his mindset. Obviously, his talent, physical talent, he's a powerful kid, wins contests, uses the ball beautifully. But um, I just love his mindset. He, he's, he's a winner, that boy. Um, and he's, he's a confident, he's confident in his ability, which brings others around him and makes them better. Beautiful. Thanks, mate. Well, lastly, what's happening with that beard, please? Is that sticking around for the season? Uh, I reckon I might, uh, might have been a pre-season <laughs> thing, mate, but I reckon it's going. Yeah, not getting too many compliments. So <laughs> round one, she might go. Roger that. Thank you. From one beer to another, Matt Turner at the advertiser. Grey beard at this end, uh, Reese. Uh, hey, James, how are you going, mate? I um, yeah. I just wondered in, in general how many changes, how many guys that didn't play in the AFL side last week can we expect tomorrow? Uh, yeah, geez, I don't know the actual number, but there will be a, there'll be a few. Um, obviously, with Elliot coming in, Lockie Glant, all the COVID protocol guys that we're out, we'll, we'll, we'll play this week. So, yeah, you'll see a few. I probably should know the number, shouldn't I? I don't know the exact number, but um, Tom Duday will be, be back. Brody Smith will be back. Rory Sloan will be back. So, yeah, it'd be a fairly different and more experienced team than, than last week. And all of those guys, bar Miller, are just about playing in the, the top side rather than having to come back through the SNFL? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, Miller has just, just decided that the best thing for him for where he was at was to play a full game in, in the in the sample. But as far as experience, uh, most of the guys will be running out. And what about guys unavailable? Is, is, is McAdam unavailable? Uh, yes. Given he was... Yeah, Shane won't play. Yeah. He just had a little bit of awareness around his groin. Um, so, he look... They said if it was a, an AFL game this week or round one, he'd play. But they're just being cautious and get him right for uh, for round one. A, a little bit dissimilar with uh, Jordan Dawson, who has a little bit of soreness in his calf. So, yeah, every precaution taken for him to get him right for round one. 
Um, and a lot's obviously been made about Rochelle. What did you you make of uh, Saligo? It looked like he did a few nice things on the weekend as well. And has he held his spot? Yes, no, Jake will stay in the team. Um, yeah, he's just a really flexible player uh, and looks pretty much ready to go. He, he plays on the wing. Um, I think he'll spend a little bit of time forward in a high forward role as well. But yeah, everything we sort of throw at, throw at him, he seems to um, yeah uh, excel at. So yeah, he's a good chance and putting himself in, in the frame. And just one last one, sort of following on a little bit from what Theo said before, are you, are you confident that come the season um, you, you'll know the, the right structure without Tex and to, that those guys will be able to, I guess, fill the void and uh, help you kick a score for those? I'm pretty confident in the guys. I'm pretty confident in, in what we do ahead of the ball. The thing we've got to work on the most is, is getting, a, um, getting more goal kickers. We, we don't have enough goal kickers. We rely probably too heavy on our forwards. Um, where the good teams and Brisbane last week had 10 goal kickers, where we had four. So, and we, we usually have six, seven. Um, so our big work on is actually spreading the load of goal kickers. Um, yeah, and then in, instead of just focusing on um, Riley or Darcy or, or the forwards kicking big bags of goals. So that, that's what we've been working on um, over the preseason. No worries. Thanks for that. I'll pass it around. Yeah, Josh. Yeah. Um, what's what's the key to that then, Riles, in, in your opinion? What, what do you think needs to happen to, to be a team that, you know, kicks more goals with a more even spread more consistently? Oh, just how we move the ball and, and probably move it a little bit more uncontested. Um, we get it forward and get it forward quick. There's no doubt it's up to the forwards to to score and win contests and uh, stages. We did that really well last year. Um, but then there's times where we need to be a bit more composed. And if you use the ball uncontested and take a few more marks, that allows the mids and the backs to get up the ground and, uh, and, and, and get, get on the scoreboard as well. So I think Patrick Cripps kicked four last night and i um, not saying we need our, our mids kicking four goals, but it'd be nice for them to chip in and, and uh, yeah, get our goal kickers up. Does, um, so, so, so many Josh Rochelle questions, but does, uh, does he bring an X factor, do you think, that maybe has been missing, a, a, a dynamism that maybe hasn't been at the, at, at the club since maybe Eddie left? I think he's definitely got that power. You need that power as a forward. You need, you need everything as a forward because you need to be aerobic because you've got to run a lot um, and you need to be able to win contests. But his, his power... You see it in a lot of players, I suppose, the good players, the, and I'm not going to compare them to the, the greats of the competition, but they have that power to explode away and uh, get that, that time and space they need to execute. And he has that abundance of that. Um, so I think that's what sets him apart from probably our other forwards. Um, just from a conditioning point of view, do you think you've lost much ground this pre-season with, with all the guys that have been in and out of protocols and, and some who missed out on last week? Do you think you've... You've lost much ground in that space? I, I don't think so. But look, just the last couple of weeks, the preparation probably hasn't been ideal. But I don't think for round one or, or the weeks after that, I think the, the amount of work and it's good to have Burjo come in because he's obviously experienced and, and he's really pumped up the amount of work and, and the ability, aerobic ability, especially of our players. So um, no, I, I don't think we've lost much ground. But the preparation, probably more for last week, wasn't ideal. Um, do you care much about the, the scoreline this week after a, a heavy loss last week? They're only pre-season games, but is there a, a concern about, you know, potentially heading into a new year with, with a couple of heavy losses under your belt? Does that concern you if, if that were to happen? Yeah, I'd be disappointed if we weren't more competitive this week. Um, I'm not sure about the scoreline, but just from a competitive point of view, um, around the footy um, and, again, our ability to control the footy a little bit more as well. So I think with a different team and, and a much, much better week, having everyone back, even being able to train properly uh, with the full list is, is massive for such a young, young group. So I think um, you'll see a very different team um, on the weekend. Awesome. Thanks, James. Um, Max, at 10. Oh, it's pretty much all been asked and answered. Um, I suppose, James, just the only one really from me is the way that you've pretty much given away 
my, the answer with the way you've sort of picked the team by the sounds of things. But this is pretty much a, a round one dress rehearsal for you guys. The way that you work your rotations and and play football is, is as close as you're going to get to round one. Or do you work in a bunch of other blokes as well? We've got a few extras, but um, our our plan is to play 22 for majority of the game. So. Um, we'll be rotating 22, I think, for for majority of the game. But we will have extras where there's a few guys that maybe won't play a full game just for where they're at. Um, but yeah, in in as far as rotations, it'll be pretty much a dress rehearsal. Beauty, thanks, mate. Any last questions for James before we wrap it up? Yeah, just quickly, Rose. Is anyone unlucky to miss out in selection in the ones? Um, look, it, because um, last week, anyone going out from last week is probably unlucky, Theo, for how we played because it was it was a very difficult day. Um, uh, like James Rowe, for example, who as a high forward, it is very difficult um, to play uh, that role when we're not probably getting it forward enough or, or the way we want to move the ball. So, yeah, but everyone that missed out for how we played as a group is probably a little bit stiff, to be honest. Are there any sort of senior players that are in the twos? Um, not, no, most of them are, are younger, younger players. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Easy. Thanks, mate.